What's the word, y'all? I just got back in from Vegas, man, um, which is crazy because there's so many content creators going into Vegas to watch Summer League, but a lot of them are getting in today. I was there from Thursday, the first day, until Monday. I took a red eye, and I'm, I'm back here. But I wanted to get there early this year because in previous seasons, I've, we have went to Summer League, and by the time we got there, the top prospect's not even playing no more. So it's like, why are we even here? So I wanted to get there day one, and it was worth it, man. And, and I got to watch a ton of basketball, which was great. So in today's video, I am going to be grading – Slash talking about what I saw in Summer League. 95% of these prospects I've never even seen before. Until last week, I was pronouncing Paolo Bancaro's name wrong. So that just tells you everything you need to know about me. In, in usual years, I watched a little bit of college hoops leading up to the draft and try to figure out who are my favorite prospects. This year, I ain't do none of that. So I, I don't even know what Jabari Smith brought to the table until I got to Summer League. So um, just, you know, keep that in mind as I'm talking about these prospects. Also, keep in mind, Summer League don't mean a, a dang on thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can take bits and pieces away from it, but there are players in NBA history that went to Summer League and tore it up. Like, um, Anthony Randolph gave my Bulls, like, almost 50 in a Summer League game. Fort Con Corkmas put up, like, 40 and, and he's a shooter who forgot how to shoot. I still believe in your four con. It's not a shot. I do believe that next season you're going to hit 40% from three. But, you know, you can come into Summer League and dominate, and then you get to the real thing, and you don't. Because 90% of the people that are playing the Summer League won't make an NBA roster. So it's like you're going against people that you want to get against in college. You're going against people who uh, just came back from overseas and trying to get that, that next attempt at the NBA. So the competition, of course, is raised. So we have people come in and be great at Summer League and then get to the real thing and just be average or below average. And then we've seen the opposite. Derrick Rose was bad in Summer League. Had me a little bit nervous. And then he went on to win an MVP. So I'm just saying, just because somebody that your team drafted might be bad in Summer League, don't mean he's going to be bad for real if I'm not mistaken just last year Franz Wagner was struggling in summer league he got to the real thing and bro was all rookie you know what I'm saying so a, a lot of things to, to talk about but you don't have to dive too deep into these summer league things couple housekeeping things really really quick before we get into these grades number one I still have a newsletter people thought that since the season was over that the boys weren't gonna be still right and they are but instead of three times a week it's two times a week I personally believe that the stuff that they're putting out now is some of the best work because you got to get creative in what you're talking about so hit that link in the description we're very close to 30,000 and oh it's a giveaway hold on so y'all know we dropped merch a little while ago it was very exclusive I think we only had 500 units because we wanted people that got it to be like the real OG we got one more and once we hit 30,000 subscribers to the newsletter we're giving away that one more shirt it is it's like it's the tan it's a large and if you already subscribed you already entered um, but once we hit 30,000 we're auctioning one away for the free for somebody out there so hit that link in the description subscribe to the newsletter and the last housekeeping thing is that I, I'm gonna start a series on this channel because um, th this channel as y'all know has been very reactionary so when a big trade happens let's hop on but in the dead of the offseason I still want to create content so I'm gonna do a series where I invite 30 different content creators slash people in the NBA world to talk about their favorite team and I need your help trying to figure out who to represent your favorite team so in the comment section it, it could be a, a content creator small channel big channel it doesn't matter it could be a podcaster it could be a writer just somebody that you like within your NBA fandom circle is that what I'm saying and, and just just let me know who that is so you can say Charlotte Hornets this guy we want him to represent us and it's gonna be like 15 to 20 minute videos of me just chopping it up with this person about their favorite team but don't be going to look for them I've been on the opposite side of that man uh, don't be tweeting them Kenny looking for you just let me know who they are who you like and you want to see on this channel talking hoops with me and then I'll go out there and reach out to them thank you let's talk about these prospects now let's talk about the people that have impressed me the most and I'm starting off with Paolo Bancaro he is getting an A nobody's getting an A plus because nobody's gonna be perfect in summer league he's getting an A for me because he looked like the number one pick no matter who was on the court in the two games that I went to of his he was the best player on the court and it was so very obvious he was he's 6'9 16 something like that but he always felt like the biggest player on the court whether it been his height or his overall size he looks like an NBA ready player and it makes sense that the Orlando Magic said that was their guy even though they was saying or telling people Jabari was our dude they was throwing a little curveball and I don't know how it's gonna work out for their entire careers but Paolo put together some amazing performances the shot creation and shot making was elite and his playmaking was a lot better than I anticipated for a guy that I knew that a lot of people had coming in as a top scorer he was looking for te his teammates you know in that last double overtime game which is crazy it's the greatest basketball game I've ever been to by the way he passed off a couple shots and I saw the noise oh he don't want to take the big shots they were sending doubles and he found his teammate it's just that simple, at least in my eyes. 
Um, dude, does that mean he's not a killer because he passed it off? Only time will tell. But it looked like he was making the right basketball play, and that right basketball play led them to the win at the end of the day. I'm giving him an A. His defense was even a lot better than I expected because I remember coming into this, people like, oh, will he care on defense? Because I guess you saw flashes when he was over at Duke that he can be a good defender, but he wasn't actually trying. There's a lot of times, at least in that double overtime game, where he came out of nowhere with a swat. He was even one that they challenged and they overturned because he came in behind. They thought it was a goal team, but it was clean. So he was giving a lot of effort on both sides, and I know he understood that the lights were on him and he wanted to come out and perform for the world to understand that I'm the first overall pick. No matter who they were going against, he tried to take the toughest excitement, and I love that from one of my top players. So Paolo Bencaro, I'm super excited about his future. <laughs> Which is crazy. He was the first overall pick, Kenny. Everybody knows he can hoop. Heck, let's just go in order. Number two overall pick, Chet Holmgren. Now, I got to watch some of him, of course, in, in um, the Salt Lake City Summer League. I wasn't there, but of course, it was on TV and everything. And he started off really amazingly with that big game where he was setting records for blocks. And then in game number two, he went against Kenny Lofton Jr. And Kenny Lofton Jr. bodied that man a couple different times. And Kenny Lofton Jr., hey, he's he's one of my favorite prospects now because his body type. You know, I like the the abnormal. You don't see players of his size and his, his weight, you know, going to the NBA and do great things so I'm a fan of him but it's not like he's a top player in the NBA so people are looking at what Kenny Lofton Jr. was doing and trying to say hey if Kenny Lofton Jr. is doing that imagine what this player is going to do in the actual NBA I'm not extremely concerned about those things at least not yet um, just because we're talking about a guy that came off one year of college, I don't think he's going to come out in year four and be buff. He's not going to turn into Gian like Giannis did in this couple years, but I do believe he's going to fill out at least a little bit more. And I honestly, even though he is a supreme shot blocker, I'm not expecting him to be the guy that's always guarding the opposing team centers. I just don't think he's there just yet, which is, which is fine. I think he's going to be in that, um, that Romy role that we've seen over the last couple seasons where like a guy's playing free safety and getting blocked at the rim, but also helping defensively. Cause that's what it seemed like he was doing in summer league as well and you do have the times where um he's trying to back down his opponents and he struggles and obviously a lot of that comes to a size i think i'm giving chet holmgren's like summer league so far like a b i, I see the flash i understand why he drafted so high with his elite shot blocking ability and the, his ability to create his own shot um but you know there, there's still some question marks and the best thing about him, he doesn't need to come in and be elite elite because he got Shea Gills Alexander on his team, who's um, very good. And you got people like Josh Giddy, who we're going to talk about because I've seen two sides of the coin when it comes to Josh Giddy's conversations. Um, guys that can create for him. And that's why I bring up Josh Giddy because he's uh, he's an elite level playmaker. So I'm not really worried about Chet. Real, really, he, he looked fine. Jabari Smith, I'm thinking I'm giving Jabari Smith a C. Again, we're talking about two games of this person's career, and it's not even like his real career, right? But still, um, when I was watching him, he didn't look like one of the top guys on the court. Again, it's completely fine. Everybody doesn't come out and become the dude day one of the job, right? Um, but it's, it's one thing that, that, really, that I was really thinking about um, watching him is that he didn't have a handle. And Chet, Paolo, the people that were drafted before him, they haven't handled to create their own shot, and Jabari doesn't have that just yet. Um, he was he was very fundamental with his movements, right? It wasn't like I'm I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna sauce you up and I'm gonna get this shot off. It wasn't like that. It was like I'm gonna do a couple dribbles and I'm gonna pass to my teammate. I'm gonna do a little crossover and I'm gonna pass to my teammate. I'm gonna go and take the shot. Uh, but I do I do see the shot uh, the shot making ability, even though he didn't shoot it great. But I saw some of the shots at him. Like okay, that's replicatable. You know what I'm saying? That's replicatable. I want to see him. With an elite level playmaker, I, they don't have that just yet. I mean, they have single, and single might have that boy uh, looking nice. Single was at summer league, and his fit was fire. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't extremely impressed with the two games I saw of him. But again, it is summer league. Keegan Murray, I'm giving him an A, bro. I'm giving him an A, and this is why I'm giving him an A. For the third year in a row, there has been something that has happened that convinced me that the Sacramento Kings might be okay. And I say okay. Because I'm not, as of right now, I don't know if I'm picking him to make the play in or make a playoff. You listen, the Western Conference is elite and it's going to be hard to do it. But Keegan Murray, and I think this is probably because of the expectations. When he got drafted, legitimately, a lot of the podcasts that I listened to, I won't say they laughed, but they were like, oh, the Kings did it again. And then he gets to Summer League. He looks like the best player on the court when the team is playing. And they say he was one of the most NBA ready talents, and I completely understand that. Great shot making ability. The defense was great. I'm like, bro, he he's making me excited about the Sacramento Kings. And then you look at what De'Aaron Fox did after the Sabonis trade, averaging 29 points per game. And you look at Sabonis and now them two having a little bit more time under the belt. You think about the trades and the signings they did, Malik Monk coming into the team. Um, Kevin Herter was a trade piece. I feel like they did one more thing that I'm forgetting about. Either way, it's convincing me that the Kings are at least gonna be fun again. 
I, they probably not going to defend a damn thing with the people that I just mentioned, but they're at least going to be fun. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're competing for a playing spot next season, which is great. Keegan Murray looked really, really good. And the shot that he hit to send it to overtime was one of the best moments I've ever been in the arena for. Jaden Ivey, I can't give him anything less than A as well. I mean, he, he tweaked his ankle in the game that I was there and he had uh, 11 points in like three minutes. I, I don't even know what else to say about that. Him, K. Cunningham, Isaiah Stewart. Um, turning into a, a shot maker is is very interesting to me. I guess when he was in college and in high school, he was a he was a guy that took jump shots and stuff. But once he got to Detroit, he stopped because they needed a center. And now that they have Jalen Duran and they believe Jalen Duran is their center of their future. Now, uh, uh, Isaiah Stewart is like, hey, I'm gonna go out there and shoot again. And he was like hitting three or four from three. I'm very intrigued about the Detroit Pistons. I'll just say that. Uh, and it's it, it looks very good. The Pacers with ben, Benedict Math right now. Uh, if you know Summer League, the way it works is there's two different games going on at the same time. There's the main gym, which is the, the um, Thomas and Mack Center. And it seems like a lot of the time Thomas and Mack is where the big time names are going to be playing because that's where the majority of the seats are. That's where the, uh, the media section is big. And we have media credentials, which is dope. Shout out to Bleach Report for getting us those. Um, and then while that game is going on in Thomas and Mack, there's also a game going on in the Cox Pavilion, which is another gym like 10, not even a 10 minute walk. It's like five minute walk around the arena. There's another court. And those are for the smaller games. It felt like the Pacers played in the smaller arena a couple different times. And I'm telling you that to tell you, I didn't get to watch a lot of the Pacers because I was watching the bigger games at Thomas and Mack. So I don't really have an impression on Benedict Matherin just yet. He seemed like a cool dude. He walked past us. He, we said, what's up? He said, what up, fellas? And chopped it up for a couple seconds. Seemed like a cool dude, but I didn't get to really watch him. And now I'm saying that for a lot of the other people. Uh, Shaden Sharp, we were there and he got injured in the first two minutes. We legitimately walked out of the gym. We walked out of the gym when he got injured, and then we got to the second quarter. He wasn't put back on the court. We were like, let's go back to the hotel. Let's go gamble. Let's go do something else because he, he wasn't there able to hoop. And I know he's frustrated because he didn't hoop last year, and then now he gets two minutes of total game time, and he tears his, tears his labrum. I've torn these labrums in both of these shoulders. Now, they said a partial tear, which could have him back really soon, Um, so that's good. But, like, not great. Not great. And then and when he did play, he didn't really get an opportunity to showcase literally anything. Jeremy Sochan, I don't think he played. Johnny Davis, I didn't get to watch him uh, play. Uzman, okay, can we just get to the other people? We ain't got to go in order. Another guy that I absolutely fell in love with on the court, and I, I think if you go back and watch my video where I was just predicting who's going to be my p favorite prospects, I think I mentioned Jalen Williams or J-Dub, um, because it's two Jalen Williamses, J-Dub, which is the 12th overall pick from Santa Clara. He was elite. Again, it's summer league. I, I got to keep saying it. again, it's summer league. Again, it's summer league. But he looked like an NBA ready player, and I know he wasn't one of the one and dones. Like I think majority of the people within the um, within the first round, or at least in the lottery, were like one and done, or play one year overseas, or play one year in the G League Ignite. He was one of the people that would uh, spend multiple years at Santa Clara, and one of his big question marks like hey he's playing at Santa Clara he wasn't playing in one of the top uh conferences across basketball so can he replicate some of that stuff when he's playing against NBA players and throughout the first couple games of summer league he did he looked like one of the best players on the court when, when majority of the time he was there and what I love was diversity of the buckets he was getting out there in transition he was creating for himself he was catching and shooting he was getting downhill like he just looked like a well-rounded offensive player or in defensive player too. Just a well-rounded basketball player. And in OKC, you could never get too many of those. So shout out to Jalen Williams. He might be my second favorite prospect out of draft. And from what I saw, I think number one is Tari Eason. Now, my co my co-workers, what the hell? Why did I call them my co-workers? My homies uh through the wire podcast, they told me. Early, early on that I was going to fall in love with Tari Eason because he is the type of player that I really like, a high-energy guy that does a little bit of everything, that's not afraid of any competition, and that's what Tari Eason was. When they were playing, and of course he plays with Jabari Smith Jr., he's going to be playing for the Houston Rockets, he was the best player on the court for them a lot of the times. We're talking getting posters, we're talking shooting jump shots. There were some times where he was like, I'm going to take this shot. Like, he will get a rebound, and his, his guard would be look like, come on, give me the ball. He's like, nah, I'm going to ISO real quick. And I like that for Summer League. I don't like that for the NBA. Uh, but, bro, I, I really, really like Tari Eason, bro. Really, really like Tari Eason. So, uh, one of my favorites, probably my favorite from what I've watched from Thursday to Sunday. Um, Ty Ty Washington, Houston did it right. You know, Houston did it right. Um, whether or not you enjoyed what Jabari Smith was doing, the other people that were the the um, rookies for the Houston Rockets really showed up. Um, Ty Ty Washington hit way more shots than I was anticipating him to. I thought he was going to be one of those little guards that's just fast, 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 and he was that, but he also had some big-time shots as well. Caleb Houston, second-round pick, 32nd overall. 
um, coming into it, I remember they were saying he was such a streaky shooter back at college, and I think he shot 32% in college, and they like, ah, he, he was supposed to be an elite shooter, and he got to college and didn't do that. When the first couple games of the summer league, he was doing that. Um, and even the first game, he was heat check. He had like five threes in a row. It felt like heat check, heat check, heat check, heat check. And the Orlando Magic have so many players, specifically on the guard tip. I don't know if you'll ever see PT in his rookie season, but he looked like a guy that I would be interested in. Jaden Hardy gave the Bulls some work. I only got to watch one of his games, though. Um, but in that game, he was very, very good. And I see the Mavericks fans already super excited about him because he might be a guy that could come in and play some minutes in his rookie season. It's crazy that he fell so low. I guess he was one of the top ranked players in that, in that class and fell to the second round. Big time steal. Another player that I really like um, that I feel like might be a, a pretty good role player for his time is um, Josh Mino. Is that how I pronounce it? For the, uh, the Timberwolves. They traded away all of their depth to get Rudy Gobert. And I don't know if this rookie is going to come in and, and play minutes or be a big time part of this Timberwolves team that's trying to win some stuff. Uh, but he looked like a guy that could come in in the next couple seasons to help develop. And he could be one of those rangy wings that defends. And he was also hitting threes, which I guess wasn't really in his game last season. So I get, he played at the Cox Pavilion, so I would get to watch a ton of him. Um, but... Again, I, what I did see, I enjoyed. And the last guy was, um, uh, what is his name? Santos from the Warriors. I don't remember what his first name was. I had no idea who he was. He was like the 58th overall pick in this year's draft. I don't know if the Warriors have stolen another dude, um, but he played with so much high energy, and he was just cutting. He was doing a lot of good things. Um, you know, the Warriors love a good cutter, and if you can defend and cut, you, you might find some PT. I don't think he will, not in this rookie season, uh, but it might be the Juan Toscano Anderson replacement. I don't know. Right, let's talk about the, the year two guys or whatever um, who stepped it up. I don't know why Josh Giddy, Quinn Grimes, and Moses Moody. I don't know why those boys suited up. Oh, B-Ball Paul. Um, there's just so many like year two players, year three players, whatever they fall into. They came into summer league and just look elite. They just look a, a grade above everybody else, which is great. You know, that's great if you're an OKC fan. It's great if you're a Knicks fan to see Quinn Grimes go out there and just splashing threes over people. Um, but I'm like, man, why are they hooping right now? Why are they hooping right now? Like, you know what I'm saying? I understand reps are more important than anything. Uh, but they just felt like a class above everybody else. Blake Wesley. Wow, I forgot about him. There, there's just uh, so many people that I was impressed with. Josh Christopher, another guy that's multiple years into his career. Um, high volume score for sure. He, he is not afraid to shoot that ball, which I kind of like. But I feel like the team has so many people on the roster that are very similar as far as like, I'm going to try to get my own. So I don't know where he's going to fit in. Uh, but he had a lot of moments in those games. I was like, dang, bro, bro out here. I guess the last guy I'll talk about is Mac McClung. Um, we were there yesterday for the James Wiseman debut, which was amazing, by the way, to see him get back on the court after I think it was 15 months of not being a part of professional basketball. He's an NBA champion. Um, and now the Warriors just have these dudes. I said that Moses Moody looked too good to be out there. Jonathan Kaminga struggled in game number one and game number two. He had like 26 points, even though he missed almost every single free throw. But Mac McClung. And I was telling the homies, like, I'm not completely sure if Mac McClung is a real NBA player or not, but he is so fun to watch, bro. He, he understands the entertainment part of basketball. He's throwing behind the back passes. He's crossing people over. He's trying to do the jelly on the layups. Overall, he's just a super fun player to watch. And I would hope that some team seeing what he's doing and give him a ch another chance in the NBA. The Bulls tried to give him a chance, and it didn't work out too well once we got to real basketball. But if he can keep – I can't say if he keep this up because he put up like 25 yesterday. If he could put up 25, he won't even just be an NBA player. He'll be an NBA star. He'll be an NBA all-star. Um, but if he could just showcase a little bit more flashes – and maybe try to hold his own just a little bit more defensively because that's the big thing. He's a small guard. Um, but he was fun. He's been fun as heck to watch. And listen, I like I said, I was there from Thursday to Sunday, so I couldn't watch every single game. Um, but I know I'm missing some people. It is what it is. Let me know what you've seen throughout the summer league that you've liked, that you didn't like. Um, man, I, I met so many people I was there. That was the most fun part about everything, whether it be people that watch the channel, other content creators, or NBA players in themselves, you know what I'm saying? Um, for the first time in my life. So, okay, this is the way it's been worked for my entire life as far as a, being an NBA fan. Um, I would walk up to an NBA player and be like, yo, my name's Kenny. You know, I'll try to introduce myself. And like, can I get a picture or can we chat? You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. For the first time, it was the opposite where a player came up to me. And it was my boy, Chemezi Metu, man. Chemezi Metu saw me over there because I was sitting in the, uh, the media section. He saw me over there. He's like, Kenny. I'm like, yo, this is the first time an NBA player has approached me instead of vice versa. Well, NBA player that I didn't know already. You know what I'm saying? Like me and Mezzi follow each other on socials, but we've never met before. So he saw me. It was like, oh, they go, Kenny, let me say what up to him. And that's just super cool to me. That's just so very cool to me. Like, you know, I had people like Tyrese Halliburton, who's the homie. He saw me in the stands. He came to say what's up. But that don't count because we've already been friends. But for somebody, me and Mezzi have never talked to each other. He saw me and went to come say what's up. It's fire. Uh, Matt Patrick Williams, 
I can't say met Dame. I can't say met Dame, but was within two feet of Damian Lillard, LeBron, Kyrie Irving. Um, it was an absolute blast. Um, so yeah, I appreciate all y'all. I mean, I wouldn't go to summer league if it weren't for y'all showing support in these videos to help me have a platform. So it's worth them sending me to summer league. So I appreciate all of y'all. Uh, subscribe to the newsletter. And then lastly, let me know who you want to see represent your favorite team in a 15 to 20 minute video of chopping hoops with me. Appreciate y'all.